Call the meeting order. Roll call, please. Mayor Rankin. Here. Vice Mayor Smith. Here. Councilmember Salaya. Here. Councilmember Hawkins. Here. Councilmember Montano. Here. Councilmember Walter. Here. Councilmember Woolridge. Here. Mayor, we have a quorum. Read a motion, please. Make a motion to adjourn to executive session. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn to executive session. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. I'll make a motion we adjourn from executive session. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn from executive session. Any, any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Kara. Ladies and gentlemen, we stand for the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Will you please bow your head as I pray? Dear wise and loving Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. Thank you for your many and abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health we need to fulfill our callings. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the first call to the public for comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may respond to criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of the council shall not discuss or take any action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. I would ask anyone that would like to speak to please fill out a speaker's sheet in the back and give it to our town clerk who will get it up to me. First up tonight, Barbara Manning. Barbara, you want to talk now? Uh, yeah, or later at the second call. Either one. Okay. Uh, good evening, council members and Mayor Rankin. My name is Barbara Manning. I reside at 3939 North Monument Drive, Florence, Arizona. Um, when the word came out that the high school pool would no longer be available uh, to the residents of Florence and nor would the library, I thought it was excellent that the town council considered alternatives and options to fill that void. I completely support a community pool and a library for Florence. I have to admit that some of that support began to dwindle when I saw the scope of the project and the process by which it was being uh, determined. Uh, as to the scope, a prior town council considered a pool and the budget was 2.2 million. Um, now this council envisions an aquatic center for 7.5 million. I looked at your recreation department's attendance records and what I found, um, I looked down at my notes here. This season, 978 residents used the pool at the high school for open swim. Um, if you include the swim team and uh, swim lessons, that would bring it to 1,085 using the pool. This record of usage does not demonstrate to me the need for such an expensive aquatic center, even if annexation does take place. Um, now as to the process, this project of um, aquatic center, fitness center, recreation, and library was first discussed on June 2nd. That's two and a half months ago. And I'm hearing that there will be a vote on this project on August 18th. And this project now has a price tag 
of $16 million. I say to myself that we must carefully plan this project. I don't believe two and a half months is sufficient time to do it and take a vote. Of course, I don't know what your vote actually is going to be, but I'm a little concerned. Um, one of the things that has to be... Barbara, can you speed it up a little bit? Time? Yeah. Boy. Okay. Um, in conclusion, I think there are many things to be considered, and if I would like to see you postpone that vote and have a committee of not only staff, but town people look over the plans for the center. Thank you. Thank you. Larry? Larry Patrick? Your turn, Larry. You want now or later? No, I'll do now. Um, I, I just wanted to, you know, I missed that meeting and, and I called you and told you why, and it was one of those events that I couldn't avoid, and I'm sorry I missed it, but I, I just want to remind you guys that you're talking about spending our money and I want to remind you of a couple of things. One, um, the taxpayers in Florence Unified School District turned down the uh, budget override three times. There's a message in that for you. Um, I think we're, we are in support of putting in a pool. We understand that uh, since you can't use the one at the high school, I think that's a great idea. And we need the library, and uh, that's, a, that's a good thing to do but we'd like to exercise um, a little discrimination in how we spend the money to build those two items, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Okay, Ruth, I cannot say your last name. I'm not even going to try it. You Ruth Wolchewski, 4033 North Monument Drive. Thank you. Um, I, too, agree with the community pool and the library, and I think it's needed. However, uh, this expensive, exo uh, it, well, not exotic, but Can you large, speak into your mic? this expensive uh, aquatic center has to be justified. Right. Um, I wanted to know, too, why the big rush, and why did the town staff go out for bids to contractors before the vote for the project was taken by the town council? Also. How much of the aquatic center expenditures is coming from development impact fees and what percentages of those fees were paid by Anthem? That, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Karen? Oh, there you are. Hi. Uh, Karen Chappelle, I live at 6665 West Stony Quail Way, Florence, Arizona. Uh, I just wanted to give my first hand observation on uh, when I saw the price tag for the aquatic center. I work at the Florence High School. I work from 9 to 2 daily, Monday through Friday. I walk past that pool every day during the week. And in four years' time, I have seen two, uh, on two different times where the pool has been used. Uh, so my question is, why, again, uh, do we need such a... Uh, uh, an expensive pool. I agree also the town needs a pool and I agree about the library because I myself am a library user and, and much in favor of it. Uh, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's get off the pool a minute. Charles Smith. No okay, you'd like to speak during it now? Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Richard Walgoner. <coughs> Wagoner. Richard. Wagner. 7350 West Silver Spring Way. I've just got two questions. Uh, <clears throat> one of these cowboys that recently moved down here from South Dakota and like they say you're a fool and his money are soon parted. But I would like to add what percent of the property taxpayers in this district come from the Sun City area would be the one question. The second question is the CFDs 
It's a $3,500 fee that, unbeknown to the fat guy, uh, when we bought our place over there, has to be paid. I try and find out what it's for, and it says, refer to your information, and Pulte will tell you, home buyers at Anthem will benefit by using the public infrastructure. So my question is, those dollars, are they spent on infrastructure in the city of Florence or throughout the Florence city? Uh, I can't answer that. It's, it'll be, uh, if you want to hang around and call the public, I can answer that, but I can't answer that because it's not on our agenda tonight. Uh, okay, fine. I'm sorry. No, not a problem. And the other, the, it'll be mailed out, the answer? Uh, We'll talk, to staff we'll, we'll talk to the staff. We'll have staff talk to you about that. Jess will, you. Jess will talk with you about it. Okay. Phil Hollins. Do you, uh, you want to wait until that comes up now, Phil, or do you want to do it now? My name is Phil Hollins, uh, 25374 uh, North Poseidon Road, the Magic Ranch. I am just listening to what the, the ladies were saying about the pool. I understand uh, where their concerns are coming from because um, from what I've read in the article from the Tri-Valley Central, this, that I'm hearing even though the town has the money to pay for the pool, they're looking at bonding around $5 million of that. And so uh, you've also had people that are talking about, well, this is three, you know, we can do this at 3%. Well, if that's the case, this is additional money that the people in the, in the town are going to have to pay for, not just, uh, you know, one segment or something that, or people who live directly in the town, but everybody who's 20 miles or 30 minute drive away from the pool. And like they said, this is also going to affect the people in Anthem because the people in Anthem already have a pool in the rec center, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be um, bonded on this also. I don't know what, to what degree. Maybe it might be uh, um, uh, subsidized or somewhat. However, that is an issue. And my question is, well, now that I'm hearing a 16 million instead of uh, 12 to 13 million, which I can understand there are some give and take. But the problem is, is that you know that 16 million dollars is going to quickly turn to something else. All right. And the people that you're looking at annexing basically don't are, are really don't have a voice in this. All right, so even the folks in the town don't have a voice in that, so that's my concern. Thank you. Albert, did you want to speak during the regular meeting on item 8C? Uh, yes, for the regular meeting. Thank you. Ruth Harrison. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council, Ruth Harrison, Florence, Arizona. I'm here tonight to say a few words about a subject that came up uh, at the Council's work session last Thursday. The discussion included lots of questions and some answers about the proposed library and aquatic center. You talked about adding a recreation building, which would include space dedicated to weightlifting exercise and treadmills. The town manager said uh, an additional recreation building like that would add about $2 million to the cost of the entire project. One of the council members suggested that the new building be constructed and that the existing exercise center on Main Street be sold so that a business could move into that space. I thought about that for a while and then realized that people aren't exactly lining up to buy Main Street buildings. Uh, to, uh, to start businesses, I'm sorry to say. If the existing exercise facility were to move, there would be a lot less activity on Main Street than there is now. And Main Street needs more activity, not less activity. So please consider leaving the exercise center on Main Street, where it is now, until Main Street begins to attract more businesses and when the town can more easily afford to spend another $2 million or so. In the meantime, the space between the library and the aquatic center can be used to build a labyrinth for quiet meditative walks and, uh, and a set of stairs for more active outdoor exercise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other member of the public who would like to speak during the first call of the public? Denise?
Denise Colbert, Florence. I want to know where all these interested people from Anthem were when we had three meetings where presentations were made, where pictures were up, what this was going to be about. Where were the questions when those meetings were held? I was at every, at every one of them and I never saw any of these people. To come here tonight when this is in progress and say the things they've said is wrong. They've got theirs. They don't care about the people down here. I do. I want this to go through. Our kids, our seniors, and our teenagers need this project. They have nothing. And when that pool call closes, they're going to have less than nothing. Please, please, don't let these naysayers stop this project. Thank you, Denise. All right, all right. You know, I just have a question about the timing of the vote. You know, a big chunk of the money from this for this pool is going to come out. Name, oh, my name is John Dantico, uh, uh, five, uh, five five eight uh, eight seven uh, Dionysus uh, Drive. The, the the timing of this looks like it's you guys in the town historic the, the current town are going to be paying or are, are asking for to, to obligate the rest of the community if it's annexed to pay for this thing but we're not really getting a voice we're not really voting we didn't vote for your, this or you you guys and yet we're going to be called upon to pay for it is the the bonding district uh, that was mentioned in the newspaper gonna relegate it to the current town like a special bonding district or is it for everybody in the new town? Thank you, John. Is there any other member of the public? Uh oh. Donna? This might be hard for me to say, Mr. Mayor and Council. My name is Donna Rankin and I live at 345 West Highway 287 in Florence, Arizona. This really, really is disturbing to me because we're all Florence. We don't care where you live. You know, my Little League program, it's a struggle every year because I get, well, we're in Anthem. Well, we live in Florence. Well, we this, well, we that. We're all Florence, you guys. That's what we need to think about is all of Florence. I don't care if you live over there, over there, or over there. We're all Florence. We all work together. And I can understand the funds and all of that kind of stuff, sort of, because I don't really get into it. But it really irritates me whenever you guys stand up here and say, well, in Anthem and, well, in Florence, we're all Florence, folks. Please remember that. All of these people up here, they work for Florence. They work for Anthem. They work for South, North, East, and West Florence. That's the shortest time I've heard her talk. <laughs> got an right. Is there any other member of the audience that have any questions? Anything? Uh, seeing no movement, I'll call, close call to the public. Public presentation, Maria or Charles, who's going to read them? Myself, Mayor. Uh, excuse Mayor. me, Mayor. Excuse me. Were you going to allow council to respond to any public comment? Uh, it call the council. That's when we have to do it. I thought, I thought uh, council may respond to blah 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 blah. Criticism? Blah. That's okay. I can wait till it's. Uh, if you want to do, if you want to respond to what you consider criticism, yes. Um, I, you know, the only thing I wanted to say is there's there's some very good questions there, and a lot of them we have taken into consideration. Um, and I would expect uh, the town to do some type of a press release to address some of those questions. But we did consider a lot of the things that you guys are bringing up today. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, let's go on with public presentations. Mayor, Council. Eight, public hearings and presentation. Issue, an issuance of proclamation declared August 2014 as Child Support Awareness Month. Uh, Ms. Bertha Castro from Child Support Services uh, is here to accept. Uh, this proclamation and I will read it into the record, Mayor. Child Support Awareness Month, August 2014. 
whereas since 1995, the United States has been honoring Child Support Awareness Month during the month of August, and past President Bill Clinton stated that providing for our children is one of humanity's worthiest, worthiest and most fundamental endeavors. Children are the best part of ourselves, the sum of our past and the promise of our future. They guarantee our lives and values and dreams will flourish long after we are gone. And whereas Child Support Awareness Month is a time to salute parents who work hard to ensure their children grow up in stable homes and look forward to a bright future. And whereas Child Support Awareness Month is aimed at spotlighting the important role parents play in supporting their children physically, mentally, and emotionally, and is also aimed at recognizing the many parents and child support professionals that work hard to improve the lives of children affected by parental separation. And whereas, with the focus of partnering being of great importance, the Department of Economic Security is changing the name of the Division of Child Support Enforcement to the Division of Child Support Services. With the division taking the steps to effectively educate and train all child support staff and partners to provide positive customer engagement and having available quality supported services within the community to effectively aid parents as they work to meet physical development, emotional growth, and economic stability of Arizona's children. Now, therefore, I, Tom Rankin, Mayor of the Town of Florence, Arizona, do hereby proclaim that August is Child Support Awareness Month in the Town of Florence, Arizona, and urge all citizens to come forward and do something positive that will help support, the, the, help support those children in care. Bertha, on behalf of the Town Council, I'd like to present this proclamation to what Charles just read. I'm not going to reread it. Uh, I think you know how I feel about child, child, enforcement, child support enforcement. I worked with a child support division for, God, 14 years yeah. or so, enforcing them, taking, uh, getting the deadbeat parent to come in. The child support division for Pinal County collected a lot of money. Uh, under the current county attorney, that program was turned back over to the state. And the money that was collected, you got to remember, it's money that you would have been paying for <coughs> if it hadn't been collected. But the kids are where the... the in my opinion, when we can help the kids. Whatever we can do to help a child better themselves, be able to get a new pair of shoes, go to a doctor, whatever, that's what we need to do. And I think through the Child Support Division, you guys are doing a heck of a job. We want you to keep it up. And again, on behalf of the Town Council and myself, thank you very much for the good job you're doing. Thank you, Florence Town Council. My name is Bertha Castro, and I am the Child Support um, <laughs> Office Manager for Pinal Region. On behalf of the Department of Economic Security, Division of Child Support Services, I am honored to receive this proclamation. We greatly appreciate knowing that we have your support as we work to provide child support services to Arizona's children. Currently, we have more than 186,000 cases that need our services, approximately 5.8% of those cases are here in Pinal County. Even though we continue to have challenging economic hardship, this state fiscal year, we were able to collect more than $35 million for the families we are serving. But our work does not end here. There are still many children who need our continuing services and we cannot do it alone. It takes everyone in this room, your community, and people in all capacities across the state to help us. Your proclamation means a lot to us. I thank you for your continued support as we work to help Arizona's children. Thank you, Tom. All right, Bertha. Thank you very much. Um, item 8B, issuance of a proclamation declaring August 2014 as Drowning Impact Awareness Month. I'm going to read the proclamation into the record, but I don't know if there's anybody here to accept it, Mr. Mayor. Proclamation, Drowning Impact Awareness Month, August 2014. Whereas Drowning Impact Awareness Month will raise awareness that number and impact of child drownings in Arizona affects everyone, and whereas the drowning incidents in Arizona take the lives of the equivalent of a classroom of, ch of children each year, and whereas a child drowning can happen to any family regardless of education, race, or socioeconomic background, and whereas families take, can take simple steps to protect their children around water, to avoid tragedy of the unnecessary loss of life, and whereas water safety remains a priority for Arizona families, communities, and government, and water watchers at Phoenix Children's Hospital, 
And whereas children, keeping children healthy and safe is the goal of water watchers at Phoenix Children's Hospital, fire departments, and other prevention institutions in Arizona, raising awareness will increase understanding and education of effective ways to prevent drownings. Now, therefore, I, Tom Rankin, Mayor of the Town of Florence, Arizona, do hereby uh, proclaim August 1st through 31st, 2014, as Drowning Impact Awareness Month in the Town of Florence, Arizona. You know, that, that proclamation hits home to a lot of people that have ever been involved with a, a drowning. I was lucky in my career that I only had to do two drownings in 24 years of law enforcement. Firefighters go to up in the municipalities see that almost on a daily or weekly basis. Whatever we can do, whether it be being more aware of where our children are around pools, putting up better fencing around your pool, putting up some sort of alarm system, whatever we can do to prevent one child from drowning is what we got to do. When you say two seconds is too long, they mean it. So folks, when you're, when you're walking around your neighborhood and you're saying, if you see something wrong, get a hold of the police department, get a hold of the fire department, let us check it out to make sure that no innocent person, no innocent little child that has never had a chance to mess up like I have, dies. Thank you. Item 8C, public hearing on a request by United Engineering Group on behalf of Palms Magic Ranch 80 LLC on an application to replace the existing planned unit development zoning with a new planned unit development. The Ashburn at Magic Ranch PUD is a planned single family residential community of approximately 80 acres that is generally located west of Mitchell Trail, south of Arizona Farms Road, and east of the Union Pacific Railroad. This case is contingent upon the annexation of the property in the town of Florence per pending annexation 2013-01. First reading of ordinance number 613-14 and ordinance of the town of Florence, Pinell County, Arizona, approving the Ashburn at Magic Ranch plan unit development, PZC-20-14-PUD. Mr. Eckhoff. Item 8C, public hearing on ordinance number 613 14 and ordinance of the town of florence pinell county arizona approving the ashburn at magic ranch plan unit development pzc 20 14 pud mr eckhoff mayor members of the council i have about 14 items on the agenda tonight so i'm going to kind of get try to give you an abbreviated presentation on each of these items, uh, particularly in light of the fact that you actually have seen many of the stuff, many of these items before, either through a development agreement that came before you or a general plan amendment um, or something similar. Uh, but the first case we have tonight is the uh, Ashburn 80-acre master plan community, and we actually had referenced this particular development um, in a development uh, pre-annexation and development agreement recently. It is a site that already has zoning in the county under the Magic Ranch Master Plan, and they decided that um, upon coming into the town of Florence, should the Magic Ranch annexation be successful, they would like to improve upon the, the plan, so they did a redesign. They lowered the, the density of the project and also designated a four-acre uh, public safety site there, the blue uh, site. Um, for a point of reference, this site is actually right behind that mini storage facility that's on Arizona Farms Road and you have a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission to, uh, to approve this, and also tonight is just a public hearing. Action will be at a subsequent meeting. <coughs> be happy to address any questions. Do any member of the council have any questions that they would like to ask Mark? Okay, at this time I will open the public hearing, and Mr. Dare. Um, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. My name is Albert Dare. Uh, my primary residence, as people know, is in Tempe, Arizona. But I'm proud to say that uh, my second home is in a place that some people may not have ever heard of in a long time, and that's my little home on the range is in Magic Ranch, okay? Long before they had the, uh, not Magic Ranch, but the Magma Ranch, okay? Back in the old days, before there was a magic, there was a man. Can't say it. But anyway, these are going to be my new neighbors, I hope. And uh, yes, uh, I look at it and I see a lot of spaces for a lot of people. And one of the reasons I moved out to Magma Ranch, that was my little place and dream. Excuse me. Like so many people to be out in the country, you know, where you kind of let the chickens run wild. Well, 
And one of the things over the years that I've owned that piece of property that's to the southeast of this development, one of the joys that I've had is the fact that the wild horses from the, somewhere come out and they go cross my property. And I don't know if you might think that's an honor, but I think it is, okay? That the wild horses would choose me to go across on. So anyway, I am in favor of this development. I know there are, posit there are negative things about having the development, and I weighed those, but there are also positive things. I'll hate to give up all my horses and things like that, but that's okay. <coughs> Progress and change. I asked the council to consider this development. I appreciate the uh, company that's trying to do it, and I do apologize on behalf of all the people, someone in that neighborhood, who, wherever they are, and where they're from, they think that on the east side of that big piece of property, that's where you dump your mattresses, okay? And on the west side, that's where you take your old couch. So I'll sure be looking forward to seeing that stuff go away. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you. much. Mr. Smith, did you want to speak now, or did, was there a certain one that you wanted to talk on? Uh, I D. D? Okay. Does any other member of the public have anything they'd like to say on this topic? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Item 8D, public hearing on a request by the Arizona State Land Department request to change the existing zoning on approximately 320 acres from single residential ranchette R1-R to planned unit development PUD. The Lookout Mountain 2 PUD proposes underlining zoning of multi-family residential and highway business commercial on the property which is generally located south of Arizona Farms Road east and adjacent to the Gila River Indian community and west of the Union Pacific Railroad. The subject site is also bisected by Hunt Highway. This case is contingent upon the annexation of the property into the town of Florence per pending annexation 2013-01. First reading of ordinance number 614-14 and ordinance of the town of Florence, Pinell County, Arizona, approving the Lookout Mountain 2 planned unit development PZC-21-14-PUD. Mr. Eckhoff. <clears throat> Mayor, members of the council, the, the town tonight is acting on behalf of the Arizona State Land Department on this, on this request. Um, back in 2007, we were talking about Florence's growth over time, including how we would grow ultimately, well, ho hopefully, into the southern portion of the Superstition Vistas area. With that discussion led a discussion of a variety of other state land parcels that were within our planning area. Some of them were islands surrounded by town property. Some of them were right on the edge of the, of the town. Through that process in 2007, we started to amend the general plan. In 2008, uh, the general plan land use designation that's sitting on the property today was, a, was applied on this property, showing a high density residential and commercial land land uses envisioned for the future. In 2009, the town entered into a development agreement with the State Land Department, and in that development agreement, they said that if the town chose to annex all of the specified parcels that they, that they owned, uh, we would then in turn work with them to ensure that upon annexation, these properties receive specified zoning. So. This is the last remaining parcel of, of that action that uh, started back in 2007, was ratified through the general plan, which also went to the voters, which had the land use ratified by the, by the voters, and then the development agreement to remember in 2009. Most of the other parcels um, all came into the town. They received the zoning that was uh, defined for them. The one state land parcel that we had initially been working on in the middle of Merrill Ranch was pulled out at the last moment, uh, but all the ones that we got permission to annex, this is the last one, um, because this one actually took a couple of steps to get, get to. It was disconnected by some, some, other, some other land. So it was included in the Magic Ranch annexation. And so by that agreement and per the general plan and per the develop, uh, development agreement with the State Land Department, we're here tonight saying that if the property goes, if the annexation for Magic Ranch goes forward, 
um, we are keeping our commitment to the State Land Department and our contractual obligation to State Land Department to provide the zoning indica indicated on the property, which is PUD, but within that PUD is plans for commercial uh, and multifamily land uses on the property. So the caveat on this property obviously is that it is, it is state land and there is no, you know, there's not a huge market today for that amount of commercial in this area and in that configuration. There's definitely not a, not a, a huge market for the, the multifamily that have indicated there. Um, as much as we want to ad ad admit that the State Land Department probably is not going to do anything to auction or sell off this land for, for many, 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 many years to come, um, and if they do, I would, I would suspect that the more likely candidate that would be interested in this property is going to say, hey, they're building single family homes all around me, State Land Department. Would you consider auctioning this property for single family home development? That's the more likely scenario. Um, that, that said, we're kind of uh, in a situation where the public, the public today has expressed concerns um, about the proposed zoning on this property and you know, we've received many comments to the Planning and Zoning Commission process, but again, we're zoning this tonight based on the general plan that was approved by the voters and, and then also the development agreement that the town entered into in 2009. So we are in a, in a little difficult situation working with the, with the state and uh, ultimately, the Planning and Zoning Commission has sent you also, on this case, a favorable, a favorable recommendation. And tonight is, is just the public hearing on this, on this case uh, tonight. Does any member of the council have any question of Mark? Mark, uh, in your expert opinion, and I know we have a lot of uh, people associated with the housing industry here with us tonight. When were when were the multifamily unit or area? When was that designated? 2009. The the, the general plan, Mayor Council. The general plan designation in, in 2007 actually had high density commercial on it. Um, it was modified to what it is still today in 2008, and that's the version that went to the to the voters when the general plan was adopted in 2010. The development agreement that committed that upon annexation they receive the zoning. Uh, that was done in 2009. Okay, thank you. Do another member have anything, Mark? Does any member of the public, Mr. Smith? <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council members. My name is Charles Smith. I reside at 5492. Um, Mayor, would you just make a statement of opening it up for public hearing? Oh. Charles, let me open it up. Go ahead, it's open. <laughs> Thank you. Again, good evening, uh, Mayor, Town Council members, constituents. Uh, my reference is about the is for the Gila River Nation. And I have an excerpt here taken from the Gila River website, and it's in relation to, to District 4, which butts up against this uh, PUD here that you're seeing. District 4 is also known as the Santan District. It is large and unique in that it is comprised of eight district villages, Oldberg, Santan, Upper and Lower, Statonic, I hope I pronounced that right, Chandler Heights, Gila Bluff, Goodyear, and East Long Boot villages. The Santan Mountain Range played a role in the history of District 4, as do many other aspects of the land that surround the community. The mountain range tells a story that connects the people with the land, not only as a striking landmark, but also through stories that are passed down from the elders from the mountains. And this has influenced and shaped the people of this part of the Gila River Indian community. The district is 119 square miles and has seen the most industrial growth of any of the districts. District 4 boundaries contain an array of world-class sports and recreation venues, as well as a host of tribal, commercial, and agricultural businesses that are owned and operated by the community. The Magic Grant Annexation has a boundary with the Sovereign Gila River Nation at District 4. In 1986, the Salt River community was forced to shut down the northbound lane of Pima Road in response to Scottsdale erroneous rail roadway alignment of the Pima Freeway on tribal land. This cost the Arizona tra Transportation over $200 million to use the nine-mile stretch of land for about six months. 
the town of Florence plans to do, or is my understanding, is to do something similar by rerouting the Hunt Highway and Arizona Farms Road traffic intersection adjacent to the Gila Nation. If Florence doesn't connect, coordinate their intents with the Gila River Sovereign Nation, then the question is, could the same fate impact the Hunt Highway realignment? Is there a convention with the Gila River Nation's Department of Land and Water Resources, Land Use Planning and Zoning Office, and the Town of Florence? As a Good Neighbor Initiative, is the Town of Florence in conversation or in convention with the River, Gila River Nation about its annexation petition to the state? What is the relationship with the Gila River Nation and the Town of Florence on the Magic Ranch annexations and the rezoning of the state land trust adjacent to the Gila River Nation? Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the council or the public <coughs> have any comment? Seeing a movement, I'll close the public hearing on item D. Mayor? Yes. Members of the oh. John? Hello. Uh, my name is John Danico. I live at 55970s Dionysus. And I've come to understand since this annexation process began several months later that this parcel of ground was going to come in to the town upon annexation based on a five year old. Uh, pre-annexation development agreement. What I'm seeing here is a pattern of the town reaching out, whether it's a pool, whether it's this hunk of ground right here, getting things done upon annexation. And the way that the timing of the thing works is that that financial value of properties around there get destroyed and we get charged additional money, but we're not represented in the decision-making process. We're not represented in the planning process. And for us in that particular region, I live right over to the, to the east of that property, right adjacent to it, it's, it's negative for us. It's not, it's not in our best interest. And yet we're getting hit financially on multiple levels. Before, and then we find out about it after 40% of the annexation has come uh, and has already been, been uh, signed on the petition. Now at the meeting, we specifically asked the, in the 913 meeting, how was this being pitched to the, to the town, the current town of Florence? These things, none of these things were brought up, although it was in your information. It's a type of fraud by concealment from my perspective. And I've voiced my concerns to the mayor and, you know, a gracious man. I appreciate the people I've met with. They were all, every person I've met in this town has been just wonderful. And I, and I, I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. I have really enjoyed meeting you guys and the, the diligence in your planning. But for me, economically, this is going to be a hit. And it's just a continuous death by 10,000 cuts that I see coming down the pike. And so that's what I'm talking about is the political process here that I think is, is just not just. It's not good. It's not good for me, not good for my neighbors. And so as you're pondering this thing, growth, yeah, growth may be good. Maybe it's not always good. It's not good for me in this case. <coughs> not good for my neighbors. John, let me ask you uh, a question. How do you feel that it's, you're going to be economically impacted by this? Well, once people learn that the, the property value, almost everybody who was, uh, once people learn that there's multi-unit development coming, possibly three-story apartments, possibly subsidized housing, we have, there's, there's you know, plans on the drawing board. Most of the people who moved in that area moved to get away from that type of property. And now we got it right in our backyard. Or it's, that's what the plan is. And the growth, you know, you, it, maybe it's several years down the road, but it's still going to be. So what's going to come up down there? Oh, well, there's planned unit development with multifamily. Oh, man, we want to stay away from that. Now, I understand Mr. Eikhoff has stated and uh, several of the town planners, 
you know, there'll be buffers and so forth, but it doesn't, doesn't take away from it. Wherever you end up with that high density stuff, just look at the crime rates that go up. Well, that means we've got to pay more for taxes for more police. Again, another cut by that's going to bleed us out. That's, that's where the destruction comes in. Okay, let me, let me take it back to something you said on Section 8 housing. Do you believe in your heart that a developer would pay the high price that the state land department is going to be asking for that to put in Section 8 housing? I, I, there's a whole bunch of them sit right back over in the corner. Go over there and ask them. They're, they're the developers that are representing a lot of the developments going on that we're talking about tonight. Section 8 housing goes on everywhere. It's here. I, I don't doubt it. There may be some out where you live. And Section 8 housing does not run it down. That's your property. Your homeowners association is supposed to regulate what happens on that property. If you have a problem with Section 8 housing, you need to talk to your homeowners association about doing your rules, enforcing your uh, rules. I'm sure that we have Section 8 housing in, in Anthem. We don't know. That's nothing that's come before the town council. That is something between the United States government and that homeowner. It's not the town. As far as multi-housing out there in that property, and you and I will probably be uh, worm eaten by the time that would ever happen. <laughs> but I, for the life of me, even though it's zoned that way, I can tell you that the council that will come after this council, if it comes to multi, <coughs> excuse me, multi in, a, in an area that's surrounded by single family units, I don't know if any council would go for that. And I think that the state land, even though it's zoned this, they'll take a look at it and say, hey, we can make more money by or if. Because that's what they're regulated to do. State land has said, get as much money for their land as they can. And I think that every one of them sent back there would tell you that single family units are where the most money is compared to apartments. We have one apartment complex out in, out in your area. It's at Magma Road and Hunt Highway. That is, as far as I know, that's the only apartment complex out there. And it's a real nice place. It's across the road. It's not uh, from Copper Basin, I believe, or somewhere out right in that area. But I don't see the property values going down out there because that apartment's over there. And as far as Section 8 housing, John, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. The people, ha the people need a place to live. I have not heard of one property whose value went down because there's a Section 8 house next to it. I don't know if you have or not. Have you? Do you know of any that I could go and, and talk to and say your property value went down because of Section 8 housing next to you? Uh, I'd have to do a survey on it. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to guarantee you the only way it's gone down is the Homeowners Association has allowed the property owner to not enforce their your, your uh, code ordinances or whatever you uh, need some restrictions. And when they rent it out, it's their responsibility. And it's your homeowner's responsibility to stay on the property owner. Now, if you have three houses in a row, they're all Section 8 housing and they're all down, weeds in, weeds in their front yard and cars parked in there and everything, that's where your, your homeowner's association needs to go after the property owner. This, this particular parcel wouldn't be in that homeowner's association well, I understand that I'm a part that. of. We have no... no uh, no uh, voice in, in that particular, whatever homeowners association may or may not be developed there. But, but you will have a voice uh, uh, down the road once this is started to develop with a council that's on board at that time and the planning department that's on and the state land department. You'll have more of a voice because you live there and you'll be listened to. It's, it's, this council, this council, I will say, is very receptive to anybody that wants to talk to us, and we'll try to get the information out. But when we're talking about the possibility of values devaluating your property because you live next to a Section 8 house, I, it's I, not I, only Section 8; it's the multi-development. I don't want to be uh, labeled as somebody who's just opposed to Section 8 or somehow opposed to poor people are somehow opposed to people who need subsidized housing because that's not the case. 
Well, I understand that, John, but what I'm saying is you, you've left the impression that Section 8 housing will devalue your property. No, yeah, well, no multi-unit multi -unit will devalue the property. And, and why, why have that. it rezoned then if it's not going to make an impact? Why do it? Okay. You know, that's, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm just, I don't want to be painted a particular okay. way. I, I made my statement. It's pretty clear. I don't like the process, okay? And, and when you guys are voting and thinking about these things and, and coming up with these ideas, you know, I, I'm there, and then and this gets sprung on us. You know, we kind of get it sprung out the opposite way that we didn't, that, that, that we asked for it. We, we didn't ask for it. Maybe somebody in Magic Ranch down in uh, Oasis maybe did. We don't know. But not, not in that community, I can assure you, at, at Iron Horse. Okay. Mayor, if I can add a couple of comments. I, I, I just wanted to say that uh, the, the town is also limited in, in uh, uh, designating what is going to be out there. I mean, we, we have to work with developers, and, and, and we can't, so to say, mandate that they put any particular thing on their piece of property. They're the property owners. We work with them the best that we can in order to get the best fit in that area. We're working off of a, uh, a, a town plan that's been in, implemented years ago on the projection of what's going out there. Um, so, you know, what, what's, what they're asking for isn't beyond what, uh, what's been discussed. I think the other point that I wanted to bring up, too, is, is as far as, as moving out to a piece of property within, within the county and, and the valuation of the property, if you look to your north, you're going to see thousands of people that see an advantage to being with inside of a municipality. Uh, they may be intentionally moved out there to get out to the country away from all of this stuff. But I think that what they're finding is they're missing out on a lot of the services and the representation that uh, they don't get without being part of a municipality. Ruben, did you have something? Tom? Tara? I do. Mark, I have a question. Where it says it's noted that the PADA commits to not increase development impact fees for the subject site for the first 10 years of the 15-year term of the PADA, this agreement also places a $1,500 cap on single-family home permit fees. Why is that substantially less than other impact fees throughout the communities? Mayor, members of the council, I, I believe that you, are you referring to a PADA on a on a on a future agenda item? You know what I did? I flipped over to 10E, so I okay. apologize. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll sorry, get, I, did, I didn't want to misspeak. We'll um, uh, we'll get to that here in a minute. Okay. Phil Hollins, uh, Magic Ranch. Um, one thing, real quick, I wanted to um, say something what John was talking about. When you're talking about uh, Section 8 housing, all right. First of all, let's go back. We talk about high density residential versus multifamily housing. From what I've heard, they're basically the same thing. All right, there's, no, there's not really much difference. So then you ask yourself, well, why in the world would you go ahead and change it if there's no difference? If you're going to get the same product, why do you change it? Well, my background, you know, I have, a, I, have a, I have a bachelor's in social and criminal justice. So therefore, I'm sitting here and I understand how this process works when you start looking at multifamily housing and how the grants are impacted, how the HUD, uh, you know, the, the incentives are, are there. All right, and that's the difference. So you know you're looking at low-income Section 8 housing. Now, there's nobody against the low-income Section 8, people that live in Section 8 housing. However, when you also look at the incidents that happened in Queen Creek, when Queen Creek built these nice luxury apartments, all right, they built it, but nobody came. All right, nobody showed up. So what they had to do is they, 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 can't, they just can't let apartments sit there for no reason. You got to, you know, people want, to, you know, you got investors out there. They want that money. So therefore, what are you going to do? They open it up to Section 8. As soon as they open up to Section 8, it wasn't the residents that were causing the problems. It was the people who were not on the contracts that lived there with them causing the problem. It was the gang members. It was the, it was the drug dealers. It was the people who were just getting out of the prisons, et cetera, who were not on the lease. And those are the type of things that we're talking about, and that brings your value down, all right? Because now 
when you're talking about putting four police officers in our community, you're going to have to put a lot more people out there, all right? Because, and that's going to mean more taxes. So that's one of the main arguments there. So our question is where, you know, I mean, at some point there's a, there's called a housing strategy. And then that's housing strategy process. If we were part of that back then, then we wouldn't have been able to actually say, hey, this is one of our concerns. You know, we do have some people out in our community that are educated, not necessarily college educated at all, but we do have people that have lived in different areas and had to move away from them because somebody had that property value out in their community and their house was $200,000. And as soon as that Section 8 housing showed up there, then a property value went down to $100,000. This is my neighbors telling me that, all right? And that's why we as neighbors, not, not opposition groups, but we as neighbors are sitting out here going back and forth, speaking for the other neighbors that can't walk up and down the street and et cetera. All right, so, so there are values. And if you look at any study, there's another study out there. And if there's any police officer that's telling you that there's not, that there's not going to be any crime and stuff in Section 8 housing, I like to meet him and, you know, and shake his hand and find out where he works because evidently he's not working on a real beat. So that's my, that's my uh, uh, I'll talk about that. Anyway, that's not why I came up here. I came up here for something else and to talk about the plan. Now, I want to make sure you understand that this is not something directed at you. Maybe this is something that I feel and this is something that my neighbors look at, okay? All right, and if you, if, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I want you to understand how, how we feel, all right? Uh, you see, Florence leaders want their plan to be your plan, all right? They don't really care about your plan as long as it doesn't interfere with their plan. All right. It doesn't matter if you moved out here for the peace and quiet. Florence leaders want their dreams to be your dreams. It doesn't matter if you moved here to get away from the crime and gang activity. Uh, maybe Florence leaderships don't realize that they're going to bring the, the, the crime and gang activity to you under the guise of apartment zoning. And that's where we go back to the Section 8, not against the people. You then have to did, uh, demand increased uh, saturated patrols. Our police presence to handle that crime, which went to your back door, which means more taxes. Last September, the town's uh, leadership threw out a few promises, such as accountability, fix your roads, build the parks, basically all to pacify us. We were told that we would, uh, that they were, uh, wanted to provide services that we've been begging for. All right, I've yet to hear about the accountability problems existing in our community or the roads that are such in despair. I've looked for them. However, when I drive around the old town, I see very little accountability when I see cars sitting on sidewalks, semi-truck tires still leaning against people's homes a year later, front yards littered with trash. And if, you, and if I walk outside this building, again, no disrespect to you all, but my, my parking lot, my uh, roads look a lot better than this parking lot. So I'm looking for that accountability there, all right? They stated that uh, we would only have to pay property taxes, but they forgot to mention about the vendors such as water, cable, phones, electricity, et cetera, will be charged in franchise or user fees in addition to the new taxes, which undoubtedly uh, will be passed on to you. Right? Or how potential bonds, such as the Aquatic Center, which we mentioned earlier, will be in, in, involved. All right? And one big thing and stuff that we're pushing this about our neighborhood is because we, I know you guys can't talk about this, but there's, there, you've got a lawsuit hanging over your head, a big one. All right? And, uh, and the thing is, is that and, and if something happens with that lawsuit, who are the bondholders? You know, how are you going to pay for that? If you if you got to pay that large one to a particular mining company, who's going to be dealing with that? All right, who's got to pay it? And that's some of the things and stuff that we're sitting here thinking about. You know, what in the world is going on here? So that's that's what we talk about as far as transparency is concerned. Uh, see, this this is some people think this is the way of the American way of life, but it's not. It's a concept of a select few individuals to enforce their goals on our community in the guise of the Growing Smarter Initiative. And lastly, in order to know what you want, as I said before, you have to ask us. Not when all of a sudden you see the annexation possibly slipping between your fingers or you gain satisfaction in achieving your 51% threshold. But at the beginning when it genuinely matters. Like in September 2013 when we were told that the town has nothing to hide. That's what I call transparency. Thank you. I have something to say. Uh, you know, this annexation is up to you. It's, the council isn't going to make the decision. It's, it's the people that live out there. 
So ultimately, it's going to be up to you. So, you know, we're trying to do what we are required to do by state law. And uh, we're just, this is, we're not really not changing a whole lot out there. It, because we can't by, by state law. We have to go with what's pretty much there. And I don't know about any realignment of <clears throat> Hunt Highway. I haven't heard that before. But but if, you know, if the people want to be annexed, you, you will vote to be annexed. If you don't, you won't be. So, and we're not trying to pull any wool over anybody's eyes. I can guarantee you we're, we're trying to be as open about this as possible. I guarantee that. I mean... But, I mean, on my end of it, I, and I know I, I haven't heard any other councilman scheming on, <laughs> on anything on this. It, it's just a heck of a process that we're having to go through along with you. It, uh, this isn't an easy, easy thing. Uh, but There's one whatever. good thing about the democratic process. Everyone has a right to their own opinion. We can sometimes agree, sometimes we don't agree. We can agree to disagree, but everybody has a right to their opinion. And it troubles me that we think only crime happens in Section 8 housing, but crime happens everywhere. I don't care where you live. They had a lady on TV today who had a, I don't know how million dollar closet she had. She was robbed. So crime happens everywhere, and I hate for us to stigmatize people based on our own assumptions, because everybody doesn't fit in that category. The, the one thing that people need to keep in mind, too, is this is a plan. If I told you how many times that we changed the plan on Merrill Ranch, and, and Jordan back here can tell you, she was one of the people that was working with us on Harrison Merrill's project, where Anthem is today, and where the mine that you referred to is that if we lose it, it's going to cost us millions of dollars, and that that's not true. Uh, there's no lawsuit against us. It's going to cost the town of Florence million dollars or millions of dollars at this time. But those are plans, plans that we try to look into the future and develop, and plans are made to be changed. And and that's what we have to realize that we have changed. It depends on the market. It depends on the mood of the council. So when, when we talk about a PUD or, or PAD, that's something that down the road, the developer working in conjunction with the town planning and zoning staff, they make the determination if they need to change it or not, or if they want to leave it the same. That's, but that's just a plan. And we all know that plans are made to be changed. If I can add one other comment to, and, and I don't know if, if you're aware of it or not, but uh, even, even with you not in the town's uh, limits right now, we are looking out for your best interests. And I don't know if you realize that you guys are directly up, up aquifer from, or down aquifer from that mine. So if anything went wrong in that mine, you guys would feel that part. That's your guys' water that we're protecting. Any other discussion? Any other member of the council? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, member of the public. I didn't mean to throw no you problem. up here with us. Woody Rass, 25304 North Poseidon Road, Magic Ranch. I wasn't going to say anything tonight. I was just going to listen to everybody, but I had to say one thing, Mayor. You had mentioned that uh, later on that everybody will have a bigger voice. Well, I don't want to wait for later on. I want to voice my opinion now, and that is I don't care how long it takes or what scenario the developers are going to do. Um, Section 8 housing, I don't think they're talking about if there's Section 8 housing, it's going to bring an influx of crime right away. It's just the idea of that is a potential for bringing the increase in crime period. I just don't want the annexation to go through, and I'm against the annexation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Hi. Hi. I was the same. I wasn't going to say anything tonight. My name's Kathy Hargrove, and I live in Magic Ranch Mirage. I've been here a long time. I've been here 12 years. Now, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but all this land from Johnson Ranch 
to 79 has been spoken for in one way or another to build housing. It's not coming up little by little. It's been selling and reselling and all that. So it's not anything new. It's been here for a long time. And as far as the state land, when the houses start coming in, the state can do what it damn well pleases, whether we're a town or not, right? What they want to build is their choice, not yours and are not ours. Unless we go to meetings, and I don't see a hell of a lot of people here tonight, excuse my French, but I've had it up to here. I like to get the information out, and I like to get it out correctly. We have nothing to do with some of these things that do go on, and neither do you. So I like for people to start listening, not sit in two-hour meetings and come away with a bunch of stuff that isn't true. So as far as housing, it's going to be what it's going to be. I mean, they've already designated it. It's been selling from one owner to another. Things change, yes. Plans change. We have some say, yes. And, you know, as far as the mine, that was a sneaky, underhanded trick the previous owner did by making it so it would be a workable mine again. I'm not real thrilled that it might become to a lawsuit, and if we are in the part of town of Florence, someone is going to have to pay for it. I don't want to, although I am for being annexed because it's a benefit to us. It's way better than being part of Santan Valley where they have absolutely nothing and no educated people to run a town, not even a piece of dirt to call town hall or anything else. So their new venture is making the fire district so they can control people's property tax. Well, thank God we're not part of that. Um, you know, so... And I do know that you all listen to what residents say. There's a place over in town several years ago, um, one of the older community things, like name slips my mind, but you change things because they asked you to. We changed the power lines with your help. They aren't going along Magic Ranch, those great big ugly giant things. That would ruin our electronics and a lot of other stuff. So that was thanks to you guys. You helped a lot of, on that. So, but I just like people to get their facts straight before they go hauling off, telling a bunch of people door to door a bunch of crap. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? One more time, John. That's it. Come on. Well, it's just real briefly, I. John Danico, 5597 East Dionysus, in, in regards to you guys protecting the, uh, us uh, w in relation to that mine, I'm grateful for that. And I think you guys are wise on doing that. I think the thing's a terrible idea. Uh, but it is a potential liability for us, and you can't deny that. Okay? And again, talking about planning, somebody planned at some point for that mine to go through. Plans do have consequences. Okay? To say that plans don't have consequences is absurd. You make a plan because you intend to get something done. Okay? That's why we're opposing this particular rezoning. And so, by the way, thank you. Thank uh, you. Thanks for opposing it. I think it's a terrible thing. Thanks, John. Any other? Before we go to the next item, I've been asked by a council member to take a five-minute recess. We'll be at recess for five minutes. And I'll close that public hearing. Thanks. Call the meeting back to order. All of you sitting, standing up, sit down. Goes for the attorney, too. <laughs> Mayor, 8E. Public hearing on a request by the WLB Group Incorporated on behalf of El Dorado Arizona Farms LLC for request to replace the existing planned unit development PUD zoning with a new planned unit development PUD, the Arizona Farms West PUD is planned mixed-use community of approximately 389 acres, generally located on the south side of Arizona Farms Road, east of Quail Run alignment, north of the Heritage Road alignment, and west of the Copper Basin Railroad. 
This case is contingent upon the annexation of the property into the Town of Florence per pending annexation 2013-01. First reading of ordinance number 616-14, an ordinance of the Town of Florence, Pinell County, Arizona, approving the Arizona Farms West Planned Unit Development, PZC-24-14-PUD. Mr. Eckhoff. Mayor, Council, there's a project called Arizona Farms. It's in Pinell County today. Um, it is. It is has zoning on it today that uh, looks that looks like this. It's residential, a little, uh, a couple small commercial pieces, a couple small employment pieces, a planned golf course. Uh, that's been out there. That zoning for oh, 10, 12 years or or, or longer. Um, the property owner that acquired the property today actually there's a there's three property owners the major one is El Dorado and Langley is the second uh, largest property owner uh, but they've been able to assemble this property and come up with a really attractive plan for it uh, the first it's broken up into two because it falls within two annexations so Arizona Farms West PUD falls in the Magic Ranch annexation and at this location, it's primarily going to be a residential development. There is a 20-acre planned town park, public park, a 14-acre uh, planned school site dedication in this development, uh, residential land uses, uh, small pocket parks, HOA amenities, multi-use paths, and so forth. And when it comes together, it'll look like, like this. So the east and west will merge to form, to form one one community. And you're going to see this item on the agenda twice tonight uh, because in, on the later part of the agenda there's a pre-annexation and development agreement for Arizona Farms West and then also one for Arizona Farms East. Uh, much more detail in your report and in your packet. I'd, at this time though I'd be happy to, uh, to uh, let you proceed to the public hearing if you desire and be available to answer any questions you may have. Any question for Mark? Hearing none, I'll open public hearing. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say? Any comment on public hearing? Please. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm still Albert Dare. <laughs> I haven't changed much. But um, these will be my new neighbors to the east, okay? And um, I look forward to seeing them in many ways. Although I look out there and I... I do expect all this to come forth by November, don't you think? Or December? They'll have all these things in place? Yeah, no. Probably about 10 or 20 years, you know. Maybe even I'll be gone. But anyway, I look forward to it. But right now I enjoy the cotton fields. You know, that was the cotton fields in Arizona and Oklahoma were my inspiration. Because I had to get out there and pick that cotton. And my mother told me, that all I could do was stand in the middle of the field and say, there's got to be a better way to make a living. So I consider that farm that next to me on the east an inspiration. I hate to see it go, but I'll probably be gone before it gets gone too. So I am in favor of this. And um, if you don't mind for just one moment, I heard all this talk about Section 8. When we came here from Oklahoma, I want you to know the most hated people in this state were the Okies. And as long as I have known, there have been rich folks looking down their nose at the poor folks. Okay, and just because you got up the pole don't mean you have to look down the hill. Okay, if you understand what I mean. Have kindness one for another. Section 8 people are not crooks. Matter of fact, they have to undergo investigations every year in order to maintain that privilege. Some of them are veterans today that have served our country. I will not allow them to be trampled on. Poor folks deserve respect in every way. And they will not contaminate you. I promise. My mother told us this was her motto. We may be poor, but you do not have to be dirty. Okay? Poor people have pride, too. Thank you. Did you ever get your hands cut by a bowl? I'm sorry? Did you ever get your hands cut by bowls? Oh, <laughs> I, I couldn't pick cotton for nothing, you know. I kept looking for over there to see how many I was going to have to pick in the next row. And it's been my whole day looking. And uh, if it wasn't picking cotton, 
I had to chop the stuff. And I got, you know, I learned this too in my life. It isn't true that I got the row with all the weeds in it. Okay? <laughs> Sometimes in life we think we did. I got all bro with all the weeds in it. That's why I'm not doing as well as the other people. Well, that's not true either. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, I don't want to go back to picking cotton again either. Any other? Hearing none, I close the public hearing. Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me here. I, how could I miss that shirt? <laughs> Hi, Mayor and Council Members. My name's Fred Redman, and I'm at Oasis at Magic Ranch. The one thing that I'm seeing with all of these um, uh, annexation uh, proposals and whatever is that I'm concerned about the roads that make the entrance into these projects. And the reason I'm interested in that is right now at Oasis at Magic Ranch, we have a community north of us that's really between us and... Um, Arizona farms, but there's a lot of land in there that is isolated and there was supposed to have been a road built for them to have access and it was never built by the by the developer. And so they use our uh, streets, our side streets, to be able to make that entrance back to those uh, to that uh, property. And so I'm very concerned uh, about when I see these different annexations that I don't recognize and nor has anybody said anything about how we're going to enter uh, or what kind of roads are going to be put in, whether they're going to be coming from Arizona Farms or whether they're going to be coming from Hunt Highway. And so my concern is making sure that uh, I'm not against any of the annexations, but I am interested in how the access to those properties are going to be. Thank you. Thank you. And, and again, I remind folks, we're not here talking about the annexation. We're here talking about uh, development agreements with the developers. Uh, We'll eventually get to the annexation after we get the signatures, but it's, we're talking about the development agreements with the developers at this time. That's what these hearings are about. I'll take your point on that, Mark. Uh, make sure our ingress and egress, or whatever that is, in and out. That's only in and out burger. But uh, let's make sure on that because that is a, a problem in some areas. Okay. Any? Okay. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Item 8F, public hearing on a request by the WB Group, Incorporated, on behalf of El Dorado Arizona Farms, LLC, Langley Arizona Farms 150, LLC, Woofies RE Holdings, LLC, David C. Phillips, CO, BGH Associates, LLC, and Superstition Springs R14 Association to replace the existing planned unit development zoning with a new planned unit development the Arizona Farms East PUD is a planned mixed-use community of approximately 766 acres, generally located on the south side of Arizona Farms Road, north of the Heritage Road alignment, west of Felix Road, and east of the Copper Basin Railroad. This case is contingent upon the annexation of the property in the town of Florence for pending annexation 2013-02, first reading of an ordinance number 617-14, an ordinance of the town of Florence, Pinell County, Arizona, approving the Arizona Farms East Planned Unit Development, PZC-25-14-PUD. Mr. Eckhoff. Mayor, Council, this is the East half of East Planned Unit Development, PZC-25-14-PUD. Um, and this half has uh, also various types of residential, uh, some, very, some lower residential, medium density, higher density residential planned. Um, but it also along the Arizona Farms frontage there, you'll see the, the red color, and that is commercial em employment area. So we made sure that we didn't lose any of the commercial employment that was in the previous plan that's been on the books in Pinal County for some time. Um, we also, I think you'll notice the the north-south quarter actually going through this development. So it's the first project that we've dealt with from a zoning perspective beyond the policy statement through our general plan, our land use mass, but from a zoning perspective of how we might ultimately deal with the north-south quarter going through our area. So the owners have been, have been wonderful to work with. In fact, we've also been working with uh, all the other owners in this area just to try and find a way to get this particular segment of the corridor planned in this, in this area. So what you see is a 400 foot wide corridor and there's some language in the development agreement that, that addresses exactly how we work towards reserving that corridor and ultimately getting that corridor dedicated. Uh, the other attractive thing about this project is the, 
the light purple area on Felix Road is a five acre site that would be planned for a nether public safety facility which we envision would be a fire station with another uh, police uh, substation as necessary. Um, again, this development will have all of the usual open, open space that you'll see in a master plan community, and there may also be opportunities for additional school sites in here after their consultations with Florence Unified School District. And as far as the roads are concerned on this development and all the other developments, the, the, the good opportunity that we've had now is that we, we are dealing with folks that have substan substantial holdings. So we've been trying to now piece them together and figure out how we can make the road leakages work. And, but you know, the situation that was created out there, it didn't, it didn't happen overnight. It's probably not going to be fixed overnight, but we've got a lot of parties that have substantial investments in here and the desire to make it better because quite frankly, they're not going to be in a position to sell homes if they don't make it, if they don't make it better. Uh, but the Planning Commission also sent you a favorable recommendation on this item, and again, this is public hearing only for tonight. Do you remember the council have any question to Mark? Mark, this is just another <coughs> example of plans changing, wouldn't you say? Uh, Mayor, members of the council, this is another example of plans changing and obviously changing, changing for the better. Uh, we can see over time that uh, the plan that was there with the massive golf course community, employment, uh, commercial that was set inside the, in, inside the project instead of Arizona Farms Road. Um, they had a completely different concept of what was, what was going to happen. And this is a master plan, so this, they're taking about two sections of land. So even now, uh, we can anticipate. They'll probably come in and fine tune the plan over, over time. This is going to take some time to, to develop. And, uh, but you know, the folks that we're dealing with now on this, on this development, want this to be top notch and we're just very fortunate to be working with uh with this group of people i agree with you. they can do anything like they did in maricopa that's great any other question this time i open the public hearing any member of the audience have anything you'd like to say on this pre-annexation agreement seeing no movement i'll close the public hearing item 8g public hearing on a request by United Engineering Group on behalf of RMG Lucky Hunt LLC for a change to the existing zoning on approximately 65 acres from single residential ranchette to planned unit development. The reserve at Lookout Mountain PUD is proposed single family residential community generally located on the west side of Hunt Highway at the Heritage Road alignment. This case is contingent upon the annexation of the property in the town of Florence per pending annexation 2013-01. First reading of ordinance number 618-14, an ordinance of the town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving the preserve at Lookout Mountain planned unit development, PZC-02-14-PUD. Mr. Eckhoff. Mayor, Council, another project that's in Magic Ranch. Uh, Ron McRae and some of his partners represent this piece of land. It is on the west side of Hunt Highway. You've, you're fairly familiar with it because we had a pre-annexation and development agreement with just recently. But if you put this together along with the uh, planned development to the south and also the planned uh, Fry's Gro Grocery Center there on Hunt Highway, you can see how it's all coming together. So we're putting together the pieces of the, of the puzzle. Um, so this is a nice subdivision that uh, has uh, some various lot sizes and also they've done a great job in preserving some of the small hills that are in that area. And also uh, upon our request, they went over to the Gila River Indian community and and said, how can we improve upon the design of, their, of our community? And one of our comments and one of the things they had in the discussion with them is, is to not have all your lots back the Gila River Indian community. So you don't just have a wall along the whole community where people can throw trash over the, over the wall or backwash their pools or whatnot. They designed a really nice community where, where they were considerate to their, their neighbors, um, as we always are working with them when we're, we're approaching their, their boundaries. Um, but this is a, another example of the collaboration that's occurred with this property, the property to the south, and then the Barclay uh, Fry's Shopping Center piece, all coming together uh, there in one area. And again, you have a favorable recommendation from Planning and Zoning Commission and a public hearing tonight. Any member of the council have any questions? I guess I've got, to, I've got to go back and ask the access to the property that was brought up. I'm kind of concerned about that because it's going through other residential areas. How many units are planned in this development? Um, Mayor Council, I, I, 
I don't have the uh, the packet right in front of me, but I can tell you um, I can tell you with, with certainty is that they will have the the access to the north side of the shopping center. They will have the access to the south side of the shopping center. They will have access from the subdivision plan to the south, and then in the zoning and the and in the development agreement as well, they still retain the opportunity to have direct access on that north part. So, for example, for that cul-de-sac that comes out to Hunt Highway, they could actually open that up if upon the traffic impact and analysis study and the design of the preliminary plat, they, they decided that they needed more access. And that was a condition that they wanted to ensure that they had that opportunity if access became an issue to them. And so it was addressed in the zoning and the pre-annexation and, de and development agreement. Uh, at the same time, though, at this point, they liked the idea of having a more of a, uh, uh, a, a smaller scale subdivision with, without the direct access on Hunt Highway. So this is probably what they want to achieve, but if it doesn't work, they have the opportunity for additional access point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Any member of the public have anything? Seeing no movement, I'll close the public hearing. Item 9, consent. All items indicated, indicated by an asterisk will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda unless a council member or a member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. A, approval accepting the register of demands ending June 30, 2014, the amount of $2,452,387.59. B, authorization to enter into an assurance agreement for construction of subdivision improvements with D.R. Horton Incorporated. C, authorization to purchase a Ford Explorer for the fleet motor pool from Chapman Ford in the amount not to exceed $30,623.94. D, authorization to purchase two Chevrolet Tahoe vehicles for the police department from Midway Chevrolet in the amount not to exceed $64,750. E, approval to enter into a lease agreement with Pinell County Federal Credit Union to lease property located at 200 West 20th Street from the town of Florence. Mayor, that is your... Does any member of the council have anything they'd like taken off the consent agenda? 9C. 9C. Any other? Does any member of the audience have anything they'd like taken off the consent agenda? Hearing none would... I make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the removal of item C. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda with the exception of uh, item C. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And all opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item C. Tara. Wayne, in our fleet pool, how many vehicles do we currently have? Um, Ms. Walters, Mayor, Council, the fleet pool located here at Town Hall includes three vehicles at this point in time, and that encompasses all of the administration, finance, additional overflow for parks and recreation, uh, it is used by the fire department on a monthly basis to take them for training in addition to community services. And besides, I use it too, twice a month. So there are three vehicles located here at Town Hall, of which one at Council's uh, recommendation will be assigned to me. Okay. Are there any cars located anywhere else or vehicles located anywhere else other than the three at Town Hall? There are other vehicles, two permanent vehicles that are assigned to, well, we can give you a list, uh, Councilmember Walters, but there's definitely two additional ones in the parking lot that are assigned to the inspectors for community services, community development, sorry for the two inspectors there. We do have a couple of dozen cars for the police officers at the, fire, at the police department, a couple of, a uh, handful of vehicles assigned to the fire department, and a number assigned to public works. The two vehicles, the police vehicles, and this vehicle, and including the water truck, was recommended for approval to town council during the budget session in April, and town council recommended approval at that time. Okay, how many total do we have? Council Member Walters, uh, council, I don't have the total count at this point in time, no. but we Wayne, can do you have it? Them. Yes, about 193 total uh, vehicles. 193 total vehicles? That's correct. 120 and pieces of equipment. Uh, Public Works had 120 vehicles under the Utilities Department and Public Works Department prior to uh, joining the uh, fleet maintenance. Uh, then with the uh, Police Department added 54 uh, vehicles uh, when they came in um, as a fleet maintenance back 
uh, last year. So that brings a total of 174, and there were approximately 20 uh, vehicles between Parks and Rec, the Fleet uh, Motor Pool. Okay, so 20. And, and that, and ma'am, that, that includes pieces of equipment also, which we consider in our fleet total, such as uh, lawnmowers, uh, uh, JCBs, which are skidsters, and things like that. Okay, is it necessary to purchase this vehicle at this time? Pardon? Is it necessary to purchase this vehicle at this time? Yes, it is, ma'am. And, and this, uh, this vehicle um, is, um, is more conducive to, uh, uh, to utilization by management and administrative uh, portions because as we expand out into broad land, it is a four-wheel drive vehicle. We now have remote stations in, uh, in the fire station, the police substation, so it's, it's conducive for us to, uh, uh, to have the appropriate vehicle to travel over this raw land as well as those areas that uh, stretch out now 12 to 15 miles from the center of town. Will it be labeled with the town of Florence emblem? I didn't notice any labeling that would be done on it. That's why I'm asking. It, it'll be available to have a Town of Florence emblem. Will it have the Town of Florence emblem on the side? Council Member Walters, Mayor, if I, man, it may if I can. Okay. All vehicles at this point have been labeled. This vehicle has now been determined to have been labeled. If you all may recall, later this fall we'll be having a planning session at which one of those items will be the town logo. We have separate logos for the fire department and the police department. This is one thing that town council asked last year. That vehicle at this point does not entirely be labeled, but we will have it labeled as a government vehicle as such. And is this the vehicle you'll be driving? Councilmember Walters, I may be driving this vehicle, yes. Okay. I would feel better if it was labeled. Yeah. It will, we'll follow what the law says on that. There's a, if I remember right, there's something on the law that says about a municipal vehicle being labeled to a certain degree. And there's also a problem with, uh, I know some of the department heads for the county got in trouble. Tommy, you might be able to help me on this. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't know anything about it. The, there were, there was some elected officials and some department heads with the county that got in trouble for uh, not reporting the mileage on uh, the vehicles they were using that were unmarked vehicles. I know that the sheriff's office has a policy on it that uh, the employees are, I think they're charged, aren't they, Ruben? Or, yes. Uh, for the use of a non-vehicle, a non, uh, an undercover vehicle, say. Well, those are law enforcement, they aren't well, charged. No, but if they're non-law enforcement, non-law enforcement, but they're either charge the commuter fee or a lease fee. Yeah, and so on, on the situation we've got here is that we have authorized our manager to have a vehicle, uh, and we're going to follow the law. And if it has to be marked or not, if it, if the laws come down, it says it will be marked, and it will be marked. If it's not, uh, it won't be. But I. I you, are you aware of that uh, law? Okay. Okay. You have any other questions on this? Yeah, I, I think it should have a for official use only. Also, I, I, there's some markings that have to be on it. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure our personnel director can take a look at that and find, find out what's supposed to be on there. Can we table it? I'd like no, to. No, we're not going to table I don't want to table it. I mean, you can make a motion to table it if you want. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to table it until we find out the legalities. So there can be a vote on that. I will second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to table item C of the consent agenda until we can find out the legalities. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question all in favor. If you vote yes, it means that you're for the motion. All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Nay. Nay. Motion dies. Now I need a motion on item C. Make a motion to approve item C. Second. We have a motion and second to approve item C. Any other discussion? 
Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Nay. Motion carries. Item 10, new business. A, discussion, approval, disapproval of entering into a contract with EPS Group to design a new water line along State Route 79 from Caliente to Vista Hermosa, an amount not to exceed $111,460. Mr. Mitchell. Mayor, members of the council, uh, this is a, a request to hire the EPS group to design the water line uh, between Caliente and uh, uh, Villa Hermosa. Uh, it's one that has been on the CIP list and uh, want to move forward and get it uh, designed. Vista I, Hermosa. Excuse Vista. Me. If you call it Villa and go out there and do it, you're going to get run out of town. <laughs> I stand corrected. Vista Hermosa. Okay. Thank you, sir. I do have uh, Elijah Williams with EPS. Should you have any questions of either him or me, be happy to answer those questions now. John, this needs to be done, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, John? No. I need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve entering into a contract with EPS Group to design a new water line along the Caliente. In an amount not to exceed $111,460. I second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the hiring of the EPA group to design a water line along State Route 79 from Caliente to Vista Hermosa in an amount not to exceed $111,460. Any discussion? I've got one for you, John. Yes, what is sir. the estimated, after we design it, what are we looking at the cost on, on putting it in? Uh, I do not have that. I'll get my first estimate at approximately uh, a 30 percent design. Um, Elijah, we don't have that. I would expect it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1 million to 1.5 million. Okay. I don't have anything else. Anybody else? Okay. Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item 10B. Ordinance number 619-14, first reading of an ordinance of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, extending and increasing the corporate limits of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, pursuant to the provisions of Title IX, Chapter 4, Article 7, Arizona Revised Statutes, <coughs> and amendments thereto by annexing certain territory contingents to the existing town limits of the Town of Florence. <coughs> of the Town of Florence, Arizona, providing for rescission of such annexation if the, if the annexation is challenged. Magic Ranch Annexation Number 2013-01. Mark. Mayor Council, this is the first reading of the, of, the, of the proposed Magic Ranch Annexation. As you know, the public hearing for this item was already conducted on September 9th, 2013. It was at the Anthem K-8 school, and we've had many, many, many discussions about the annexation and all the things that are occurring within the annexation since then. Um, the Magic Ranch annexation obviously is the green area. The blue area represents the proposed Arizona Farms annexation, which is your next, next item. Uh, this particular annexation is, is just a little over four square miles. If both of the annexations are successful, you're looking at bringing the corporate limits of, of Florence from roughly 62 square miles to just over 68 square miles. Obviously with that there would be an immediate influx uh, of, of population and, and the uh, planned developments that would occur. I'd be happy to address any questions. Any question for Mark? Mark, this is just a second reading only, right? Mayor Council, this is the first, uh, the first reading of the annexation ordinance, so okay. it would have to come back for a, for a second reading. and. Um, we are looking, I, I don't know that the clerk has set the final date, date for that. It could potentially be on the 18th, which would be the next regular meeting, or it could be a date other, other than that, but that will be set on an agenda and, and posted appropriately. And that's when action would occur if, uh, if we're able to proceed with this. Thank you. Any member have any questions for Mark? Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Next item. Item 10C, Ordinance Number 620-14, first reading of an ordinance of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, extending and increasing the corporate limits of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, pursuant to the provisions of Title IX, Chapter 4, Article 7, 
Arizona Revised Statutes and Amendments thereto by annexing certain territory contiguous to the existing town limits of the Town of Florence, Arizona, and providing for rescission of such annexation if the, if the annexation is challenged. Arizona Farms Annexation Number 2013-02. Mark. Mayor Council, I think I, I, I <laughs> addressed this in the previous presentation. I'd be happy to address any questions if you have them. Again, this is the first reading, second reading will be announced later. Absolutely. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mark. 10D, resolution number 1465-14, dis discussion, approval, disapproval of a resolution of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving the pre-annexation and development agreement with Barclay Holdings, XL, III, LLC, and Arizona Limited Liability Company, and authorizing execution of such pre-annexation and development agreement, annexation number 2013-01, Barclay property. Mark. Mayor, members of the council, this is a pre-annexation and development agreement with Barclay Holdings. Barclay Holdings represents the, all of the area within this commercial shopping center except for the big store, which is a, which is a separate ownership, which is at the Smith's, a.k.a. Fry's food, food stores. So all of the proposed inline shops and pads, which might be banks or fast food restaurants and so forth, is all represented by the Bar Barclay Group. And um, we actually have just completed the development agreement with uh, Fry's as well. That will be on the next agenda. So this whole property here, um, both owners are looking forward to coming into the town and expressing a strong desire to be able to be in a position to build this store uh, in the coming years as development picks up. And um, with it, you will see that there, uh, this is a little bit different than the, than the traditional uh, residential um, development agreements that we've had before, uh, but there is a commitment to, to not increase the development impact fees that are applied on the property for, a, for the, the coming 10 years. So if they're able, which we hope, to build uh, this development within 10 years, uh, they're going to be at, the, at the, current, the current rates, or if the impact fees go down, they'll be at the, at the lower rate or whatever they become. Um, after, the, after that period, they would be whatever the prevailing rate happened to be. Okay. You remember the council had a question, Mark? Need a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 1465-14. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 1465-14. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 10E, Resolution 1466-14, Discussion, Approval, Disapproval of a Resolution of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving the pre-annexation development agreement with Chi Construction Company, an Arizona corporation, and authorizing execution of such pre-annexation and development agreements, annexation number 2013-01, Parcel G and portions of parcels K and F at Magic Ranch Properties. Mark. Uh, Mayor Council, this is the development agreement with the Chai Construction Company, which is an arm of uh, DR, DR Horton. DR Horton has been the home builder that's been out in this area of Magic Ranch building for some time. They were the pioneer at, um, in this area. They have some lots remaining in this area here, which is actually uh, right around the area that some of our some of the uh, folks that spoke earlier tonight um, are, are living in this community. Uh, but those are some of their undeveloped lots. They actually uh, own some additional homes uh, that uh, they're still under their ownership. They haven't sold them yet, but they're not party to the development agreement because they've already been billed. They paid the fees, etc. Uh, the subdivision is is 100 percent complete. So at this point, um, uh, they have a pretty straightforward development agreement where the, the impact fees would not be raised on them for, for the 10 years. And then also um, there's a one, one unique factor, which uh, Council Member Walter, you brought up before, is that there is a $1,500 cap on single family home permits. And, and we've tried to have a generally consistent formula in all the pre-annexation development agreements. I think you've seen that. Uh, but we're going to run into circumstances on each development that are slightly unique. And the unique case on this one and the next one with D.R. Horton 
is that we're talking about uh, we are working with the end user. We're working with a home builder that has made a substantial investment out in this area. They've already calculated their pro formas and what, what all their fees are going to be, their permit fees, their plan review fees, their uh, development impact fees, their construction sales taxes, et cetera, et cetera. And what they found in their pro forma was that uh, there was a differential in the fee structure when they got to their, their larger housing product. So when they got to a home, or if they get to a home and the, as the market returns, that is in the 200 to 250,000 and above range, the calculation between how the county um, a, a calculated the fee and how we calculated the fee brought it over slightly over the 1,500. So they just wanted to make sure that they, when they came into the town, actually that they were uh, that there continued to be an incentive for a reason for them to come into the town, and they weren't actually coming into the town and being in a position where they would pay more uh, to construct their homes in the town. So that's where that. Um, <coughs> that particular situation came from. And then, of course, there is a, uh, you know, there's a 10-year period on the, on the impact fee, but obviously they hope and the, and the, and the town, town hopes that they're, they're going to be uh, wrapping up these lots, we would assume, within the period of two to, two to three years, and then hopefully moving on to other opportunities that are going to be within the town of Florence. Any member of the council have any question of Mark? Hearing none, I uh, need a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 1466 14. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 1466 14. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 10F, resolution number 1467-14, discussion, approval, disapproval of a resolution of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving the pre-annexation and development agreement with D.R. Horton Incorporated, a Delaware corporation, and, and authorizing execution of such pre-annexation and development agreement, annexation number 2013-01, Magic Ranch, parcels B and C properties. Mark. Mayor, members of the council, I, I same same as what I said on the previous one applies, but I will take the opportunity to, to note that uh, this, this is a different section of Magic Ranch. They have a whole lot more um, uh, development to, to proceed with here. Uh, this is just immediately, uh, it's, it's right in, around the area of the, uh, the, the Johnson uh, Golf Clubhouse and so forth. Um, again, they would really love to be in a position where they could just come and finish off the subdivision and move, and move on to, to other lands such as perhaps uh, you know, some of the master plans that were approved here tonight. But I would like to say that uh, you know, when you're working actually with some of the end users, such as Fry's and D.R. Horton, um, you know, you're presented with a, a whole different bag of, of challenges sometimes, and uh, there's, there's some skepticism and some hesitancy sometimes. And, uh, and I can say that it's just been a privilege to work with all the folks and, uh, and to build that relationship with them over the, over the past year. And we're hoping that we can complete the annexation because uh, we will go from having uh, one prominent master, uh, master home uh, builder in the community with Pulte and, and Anthem um, to having um, D.R. Horton in the community. And, and in this particular area, they're going to be in a position where they can, they can get housing starts as soon as the market uh, warrants it. So it would be a great opportunity for the town. Thank you. Any question to Mark? Need a motion? Make a motion to adopt resolution number 1467 14, entering into a pre annexation and development agreement with D.R. Horton Incorporated, a Delaware corporation. Second it. We have a motion and second to adopt resolution 1467 14. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item 10G, Resolution 1468-14, Discussion Approval Disapproval of a Resolution of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving the pre-annexation and development agreement with El Dorado Arizona Farms, LLC, an Arizona limited liability company, and authorizing execution of such pre-annexation development agreement known as Annexation Number 2013-01, Arizona Farms West property. Mark. Mark. Mayor, members of the, of the council, um, again, a couple of complicated pre-annexation and development agreements related to the uh, project that we saw before. This is the agreement for Air, um, 
I got the wrong uh, <laughs> slide up there. Hold on one second. So we're talking about the Arizona Farms um, property. Uh, we have two pre-annexation and development agreements for Arizona Farms. We have the one for the east, we have the one for the west. You'll see that the structure on the, uh, the impact fee adjustment is that there's, there's a, the same incentive that we've been talking about with other developers for the residential, um, but there is a slight incentive also for them to get uh, some commercial going, hopefully, commercial and employment multifamily with going within the next uh, 10 to 15 years. So there is an incentive for some of that development to occur. I will note that what makes uh, you know, Arizona Farms East and West obviously very unique and requires those terms is because this is a property like I, I hinted at before that is probably going to take 15, 20 uh, years to develop out completely uh, because you're talking about the freeway corridor and school sites and town parks and uh, a lot of new roads. There's a, there's a lot of things that are going to go on with this with this property. And again, um, in the agreement, you'll note on both of these that there is language that deals with the dedication of the public safety uh, facility site, the reservation of the freeway corridor, the school dedications, the park dedications. Um, we were able to work hard on these uh, development agreements in, in just a we didn't have a whole lot of time. El Dorado acquired the property during the period of the annexation, and we've been able to kind of come full circle on these in just a, a matter of months in regards to their zoning and the development agreements, and um, we're very pleased with what we have uh, to present to you tonight. Thank you. Any member of the council have any question? Mark? Hearing none, I need a motion. Make a motion to adopt resolution number 1468-14. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 1468-14. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 10H, resolution number 1471-14. Discussion, approval, disapproval of a resolution of the town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving the pre-annexation and development agreement with Eldorado Arizona Farms, LLC, an Arizona limited liability company, and Langley... Arizona Farms 150 LLC, an Arizona limited liability company, and authorizing the execution of such pre annexation and development agreement. Annexation number 2013 02, Arizona Farms East property. Mr. Eckhoff. I'd be happy to address any questions you may have. Here we go again. He don't want to talk. <laughs> Good. Uh huh. <laughs> no question. Uh -uh. Need a motion? I make a motion to adopt resolution number 1471-14. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 1471-14. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 10I, resolution number 1470-14, discussion, approval, disapproval of a resolution of the town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving the pre-annexation and development agreement with CMG 900 LLC, a Delaware limited liability company, and authorizing execution of such pre-annexation and development agreement, annexation number 2013-01-399 finished lots within Magic Ranch property. Mr. Eckhoff. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, um, this one I will definitely have a, a brief discussion on. Um, really unique situation that this particular ownership group uh, found themselves in, in the fact that they acquired uh, 399 finished lots out here in the Magic Grants subdivision. So what a, on one hand, what a great opportunity to have 399 finished lots, but on the other hand, it's a, it's a concern of when you're going to develop those, uh, those lots. Um, when they did pick up those lots from the previous owner, the previous owners actually had made uh, some some arrangements with the county that put them in a very attractive uh, situation. So as we were discussing this pre-annexation and development agreement, we found ourselves in the position of, of how to help them come into the town uh, with without them being in a, a worse financial position than they were to build in the, in the county. So with every other entity, we've, been, we've, we've had a pretty close relationship with what, that, uh, what the impact fees had to be or what the fee structure had to be, and we were able to provide uh, a small incentive to bring folks in. This particular property actually is the only uh, 
these are the only lots in the, within these two annexations that actually have an agreement with the with Pinal County that they will that they prepaid their transportation uh, fee to the to the county. Uh, I think this was an advance of the county having a a, a transportation impact fee proper, um, but they made an arrangement with the county to prepay fees towards transportation improvements. Uh, the fee was paid, and as part of that agreement with it, there would never be a transportation impact fee ever applied on the on the property. So they do have a recorded standing agreement, uh, and as you know, we've uh, worked with everybody to make sure that we've honored uh, the agreements that they've that they they have in place in the county, whether it be their zoning or uh, different fee structures and so forth. Um, so the. The only way to get to a point um, on this one where it ended up being, uh, where they ended up not being harmed essentially in paying more to build homes in the town um, was to um, have the reduced impact fee that's noted in the development agreement. Uh, but also on this one there is a, a commitment to, to not have a construction tail sales tax um, for, the, for the homes that are built within this, within this project. Uh, when the math is done, again, every, it's all about doing doing the performer and, and what they're going to what they're going to pay in the county, what they're going to pay in the town, and that was the only possible equation that was that was out there, um, again, to make it worthwhile for them to come into the to the town. Um, we felt that it was beneficial. I'm sure the town manager and, and uh, Mr. Manalo could elaborate as as necessary, but we felt it beneficial to bring this piece of property into the into the town and come up with these arrangements because, again, we're talking about 399 finished lots, so we don't have to go through a process of, of zoning, preliminary planning, final planning, construction, um, acceptance of improvements, uh, you know, the, whole, the whole nine yards. When they come into the town and they're, as soon as there is a, a market for new homes, they can immediately respond by, by selling uh, you know, X number of lots or all 399 lots to one or more home builders and be able to go vertical um, instantly. Whereas in almost every other scenario, um, except for the few lots in Crestfield Manor, uh, they'd actually would have to go through the whole um, engineering and development process and they're looking at about a year and a half before they go vertical. So this is a very nice piece to, um, to bring into the town and uh, fits that last piece of the puzzle on the annexation. And I would be happy to elaborate, as as would others. I think if you if you have questions, Mr. Minato, is this legal? <laughs> I believe it is, Mayor. Um, the uh, you know the state has imposed some restrictions on uh, the uh, municipality's ability to uh, provide waivers of uh, tax, but they don't apply to this situation. And so I think it is. Uh, it is within our discretion to uh, provide uh, <coughs> essentially what is a waiver of the construction privilege tax that we would normally attach to this kind of um, uh, business. Um, but uh, as long as it was um, deemed to be financially uh, in the best interest of the town, which I, I think it is, um, I, I don't see any legal issues with it. The transportation money has been paid to the county. Is there any way to get any of that back from the county? I, I really don't know. I would, I would uh, hesitate to be optimistic about that because I think it's unclear uh, in what way the, the county uh, utilized those funds once received from the developer. Maybe Ms. Rose can answer that question. <laughs> Uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the council, uh, thanks for the question. We would certainly stand behind you if you want to try to get the funds back. I understand they may have been appropriated in different sorts of ways um, through previous administrations at the county, but... Thank you, George. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Any other questions? Hearing none, I need a motion. I'd like to make a motion to accept resolution number 1470-14. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 1470-14. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same side. Motion carries. Mayor, uh, no, item 11, department reports. The department reports are attached.
Any member of the council have any questions the manager on the department reports? Not the manager, but within one of the department reports, um, Wayne. Which one are, are you in? Uh, Public, Public Works, works. Okay. 11B, <coughs> Section 8. Okay. So it, when you list six vehicles were serviced for preventative maintenance and eight for repairs, and you give the ID numbers, is it possible for you to also list what department and the use of that vehicle? Yes, ma'am, it is, easily. Okay, what, can you, can you give me a breakdown then of what vehicles were serviced? In what department, based on the coding that's below? On the uh, monthly report that you have in front of you? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't have a copy of mine in front of me, unfortunately. Uh, so I can read it for you if you'd like. Yes, if you just read the first two letters, I can tell you what department. Okay. Okay. Which would you? Well, um, um, the first one, uh, the first item is the uh, preparing specifications for the items mentioned: two police vehicles, one motor pool vehicle, one water truck, one street sweeper. We received all bids on all those. The second one is a PD vehicle. Uh, the third one is uh, just the procurement of some. Uh, 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 unique equipment that we need in order to fulfill our services fleet uh, maintenance, uh, oil recovery, AC recovery, et cetera, cool recovery system, and a full diagnostic system basically to hand, uh, do electronic uh, diagnostic of any equipment that we have within uh, the fleet maintenance. Uh, the next vehicle is a police department vehicle. Uh, the next one is a fire department vehicle. The next uh, two, which is one line item, is a uh, street department vehicles. Uh, and then the next four are sanitation vehicles. We include maintenance on our uh, trash trucks that we still have and uh, the pickups assigned to sanitation. So that's why uh, we have sanitation vehicles. Uh, and another one that we retain pin assembly on the uh, another sanitation vehicle, which is the SA nomenclature. Again, we, we, we run these vehicles monthly. Next one's a sanitation vehicle. And then the next one is a wastewater vehicle. WW is wastewater. And third one is an IT vehicle. Okay, now for the sanitation vehicles. I'm sorry, ma'am. For the sanitation vehicles, because they have been out of use for so long, what is our plan for them? Are they uh, continued to be we, run and operated? Yes, we have. Uh, we operate them monthly to maintain, uh, you know, the um, the running of the vehicle. We run them about uh, 20 miles out to the uh, transfer station and back. Uh, currently, we're investigating with two municipalities. Uh, one was. Uh, Globe and the other is Coolidge on the sale of those vehicles on the rubbish trucks. We plan on maintaining one of them, uh, the latest one, but the other, uh, the other three would be uh, maintained, would be sold uh, uh, to those entities if we can reach agreement with them. And if we do sell them, where will the money go from those sales? I, as I recall, it went to the sanitation fund basically. Now would it stay in there as our long-term goal was to eventually build a transfer station? Uh, would it join that 1.6 yep. million dollars? Councilmember Walters, Mayor Council. Yes, the, the sale of those trucks would go back into that fund. That fund is used um, very sparingly uh, for operations, uh, council approved, I believe 1.5 positions out of there. We have one gentleman that uh, works full time on sanitation and we have additional help there. Um, we, uh, at some point, uh, I believe it was council member Salaya and, and Mr. Montano that did request to see if we can localize a transfer station. At this point in time, we are utilizing the transfer station, I believe it's right off of Hunt Highway. And uh, Mr. Costa has been ensuring as to the amount of waste and what it does cost the town. 
Um, so we are due to come back to council probably in about six months to find out how cost effective that is being. At this point in time, we had not been able to locate, though, a place in town limits for transportation. Okay, thank you. That's all I had. If, if I could add to that, that uh, the, uh, the report is, uh, doesn't address the preventive maintenance, but we, we perform preventive maintenance for approximately uh, uh, 40 vehicles per month. <coughs> that we maintain, and that's in our weekly report. We, prov we report the preventive maintenance as well as the repair uh, vehicles that we work on during the week. That's in our weekly report. Okay, thank you. Any other members of the council have any on uh, departmental reports? Yes, I have one for dealing with the police department. Um, I spoke with Charles earlier, and I was looking for some information on it regarding the speed trailer that was on Main Street southbound on downtown and on June 9th the concern at 3.33 p.m. it showed the, the highest recorded speed was 52 miles an hour going down Main Street. So of the number of vehicles that traveled down Main, Main Street which 14,216 the average speed was 16 miles an hour but those that were traveling above the speed limit was 8,000 and 29. So this is down Main Street. What are we going to do about getting people to slow down in downtown area? Councilmember Montano, uh, Mayor Council. Um, as, as we did talk, I, I do need to talk to Chief Hughes about that. Um, I, I'm kind of concerned too, a, a, as you're aware, um, Butte Avenue Main Street going to the north is the towns, but going south is ADOT. Um, so we'll have to figure something out. And it, it, it really does shock me that a car was going 50 plus miles an hour in the downtown area. Hmm. That's very, very worrisome. So we need to figure something out if that's the case. And, and I will get with Mr. Tryon and Chief Hughes when he returns on Wednesday. And we will resolve something. Figure something I'll out. have to go along with him because I happen to watch that street quite regularly. And let me tell you, there's a lot of cars exceeding the speed limit on Main Street. Secondly, I have a question to add to this. Out in Anthem, I notice on the telephone poles or electric posts, there are speed signs, the ones that give your speed, just small. Whose are those? Uh, Vice Mayor Smith Council, those are the towns. The town put those up. Uh, there's one on Merrill Ranch Parkway in Anthem. Uh, I have talked to Chief Hughes to see if he can get some on Felix Road and also in the downtown area too. So That would be nice to have a couple of those on Main Street. Okay, Ruben, did, did you see something different? To, uh, this is located in the police report under BEAT 1. Under what? BEAT. B-E-A-T. So, you know, with a speed limit of 15 miles an hour and someone traveling 52 miles an hour, that's concerning. Well, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Terry, get back to get get back to the chief. We need to be really addressing <coughs> that, especially in the evening. Maybe rather than sitting out on the state highway, we can set one in downtown or something. Slow them down. Okay. It was southbound, uh, north of the stoplight. North of the stoplight? Yes. Oh, okay. There's, there's quite a few cars coming northbound also that are doing more than the speed. I think they're supposed to think they're on 79, but they're not. <laughs> and they're going straight ahead, and they're jamming on their brakes when they get out of the, the post office because they're on the wrong street. But they're still doing tremendous speeds going down that street. Just because Main Street's vacant at night doesn't mean it's a speed. It's speed during the daytime. That's 3:33 in the afternoon on a Monday. That's when that was. Yes. I didn't think I went that fast. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. Okay. Then go to call the council or second call to the public. Any member of the public like to speak? Mayor and Council. Good evening again, Ruth Harrison, Florence, Arizona. I'm standing before you to ask you, no, to implore you, 
to replace the proposed splash pad at Padilla Park with a recirculating water fountain. A recirculating water fountain will save water and will show the world that the town of Florence cares about the water problem our region is facing during this long-term drought. The water from a splash pad would not recirculate. Instead, the, the spouting water from 10 spouts, um, which is the number I've been told uh, it's going, it would have, would immediately become wastewater as it flows down the drain. The pad would be turned on when someone approaches it. At all other times, the pad would remain inactive and dry and boring and potentially unsightly. A recirculating water fountain, uh, in addition to conserving water, will provide a continuous, gentle sound to block nearby traffic noise. Instead of a wasteful splash pad, please authorize the installation of a recirculating water fountain at Padilla Park. It just makes good sense. Thank you. Thank you. Denise? Mayor, Council, Denise Colert, Florence. Um, I was very upset when I got up to the mic before. I'm still upset, but I've calmed down. We had so many meetings. To say that you guys kept this secret or you're pushing it, uh, I don't know how you sit up there and take it. I really don't. Because it's not true. Um, some of the stuff being put out in, in brochures on the election about our extravaganza and in the newspaper, it, it just hurts me. It's like some people feel that the downtown area people don't deserve what you're planning. And I think that's so wrong. You know, I don't have any, any I pro other than the library, I probably will never go to the water park. I have a swimming pool that I've lived over seven years near and never been in it. But this is vital for the town and for people not to have come to the meetings and gotten the inf correct information as to how much this potentially is going to cost to build all of it. Um, and then they stand up here tonight and tell you it's terrible and it's too big and it's too fancy. Where do they, where do they get the feeling that it's too fancy? Is it too not too fan is, do the people down here not deserve something really nice? This has been in your plans for years. That's why you brought this piece of land over here years ago, from what I understand. And I so want to see this go forward. As I said before. Also, about speeding, we have no Florence Gardens, too. It's nice and quiet now, but in the wintertime, they don't know what speed limits or stop signs are for. So it would be nice if they hung those things up on poles out there, too, and gave them some tickets. Thank you. Thank you. John, you got something else? Yes, sir. I knew it. Uh, my, my question to the, the council, maybe I was talking to the planning guy, uh, the, the waivers of these fees for all these PADAs that are here, um, you know, the Fed has pumped billions, trillions of dollars into this economy, and eventually inflation is going to be kicking in here. And how are the calculus being generated, these uh, transportation things for the uh, fees that they pay for the, um, uh, the developers pay. Inflation is going to continue to go up, but they're capitated for 10 years. Now, if those are real costs that are being assessed that actually go to pay for roads, go to pay for lights, go to pay for the signs and so forth, and yet inflation is going to be continuing over the next 10 years, and by all sound macroeconomic theory, you would think it's going to go up quite substantially. What, who's, who's going to be paying for that? And then how are those calculations being, uh, being assessed? And, and then where is that burden going to fall? The future residents of the town? Uh, I'd like to ask about that. 
The other, the other piece about uh, the, the, the gal who was just talking about the pool, you know, it's, it's great to have a pool. Nobody's saying anything against having a pool. It's who's going to pay for it? That's, that's the question. Who's going to pay? And um, so I'd like to have, how, how, how is it that they, they have special bond issues for the folks at Merrill, special little zones, because they're the direct beneficiaries of it, but the direct beneficiaries of the pool, how about a special district for those guys? That, that would be fair, wouldn't it? If it's, if it's good for the goose, good for the gander. It's just justice. It's, a, it's about equality. It's about treating people with respect, and treating people with the honor they deserve and not looking at them in some other uh, another way. It's just, you know. So anyway, I'd like to see if the, anybody could present how those economic figures are calculated, what those projections, what those budgets, how that analysis is conducted. Uh, if I could get that, please. Thank you. Any other member of the audience? Seeing no movement, I'll close the call to the public. The second one, Tommy, and call to the council, Tommy. Just, just a couple of comments. Um, I'm not sure if our last uh, workshop on, on that was televised or not. It, I don't know if Channel 11 picked that up, but uh, a lot of that information was discussed at, at that particular meeting. Um, let's see, what other things do I have? Uh, also, if, if staff could release some type of a PR thing to address maybe some of the questions that were asked tonight, maybe recap what we discussed at the, at the previous meeting, uh, let them know that, that these items, we did discuss a lot of these items at the last meeting. Um, let's see. And I, Wayne, I don't know how you remember all of this information in your head, but that's just incredible. That's about all I got. Thanks, Tom. Tara? I have a few things tonight. In your PR statement, um, I'd also like you to look at, I've inquired before and I'd like it to be followed through. With the development impact fees, they are regulated by the State of Arizona, Revised Statute 9-46305. And this Arizona revised statute states that aquatic centers do not qualify for use of impact fees as part of a recreational facility. I have requested from our town attorney to provide a public legal opinion regarding this matter, specifically inquiring the legalities of utilizing the impact fees collected from the Anthem at Merrill Ranch CFDs, whereas it is deemed outside of the service area. If we're looking at our prior infrastructure improvement plan ranging from 2013 to 2023, one will see a different plan and funding sources. Lastly, there is going to be a second work session on August 12th, Tuesday. I'm hoping it is going to be at 6 p.m. And at that time, I would also request a complete operating cost regarding all facets of the community center and considering that we've toured multiple facilities over the month of June, we can acquire them from those facilities to come up with a cost of what it will cost the residents to maintain this facility and where the cost is coming from. And in closing, the reason why I did not vote for the fleet maintenance vehicle is I believe that it needs to be marked and for official business use only and not for personal errands. Thank you. Ruben. Yes, I'd like to uh, inform everybody about the passing of Ed Cunningham, who was a, I wouldn't consider him a pioneer, but as a farmer rancher in this area, he, he sits in the same seat along with, with uh, Emmett Rankin, with the Mahares brothers, with Charles Whitlow, and the Padilla brothers. You know, as a farmer, he farmed the community right here where Florence is. Being here and graduating from Florence High School, and going to school here in the ni late 1940s into the 1950, you know, and a Korean War veteran, you know, he sat on the Arizona Cattle Growers Association, the uh, Nature's Conservancy, Soil Conservation, and, you know, he was a proud member of being of this community and, you know, being 80 years old, approaching 81, you know, it's tough to see somebody of this community who's been around as an icon. You know, he was involved with the kids in school with FFA, he was on the school board for Kenilworth School, 
when it was still Florence Union High School and Union District. So he'd been around for a long time, but just being in this community as a farmer, and then he owned the, the Whitlow Ranch after Charles Whitlow and had that for many years. It's just sad to see somebody of our community go like that. Bill? Well, uh, on the point on the splash pad, I would hope that that's going to be recycled water. I mean, recirculated. I mean, it's not just going to go down the drain, is it? Not really. I mean, I can't imagine us doing that. I, I, would, yeah, I, I mean, I would think we'd have a pump there to, well, that, that's, that's wrong. We can't be just running water down the drain. No. That, uh, Charles, do we have to the meeting and explain that since we can't discuss it? Well, no, I'm just saying. I agree, if, but I if, agree with you, Bill. No, we can't. I, I mean, if that's the case, we need to redesign it or something. If it's, even if it's not going to be a fountain, if it's just going to be a splash pad, I don't want to see the water just running down into the Goodbye. sewer. You know? yeah. Right down the drain. Yeah. Valerie? I hope that's I don't have anything tonight. Tom? On the uh, splash pad, I do know that... Uh, if you have a splash pad and you have recycled water, you're going to have to put chlorine in it, etc. And that is going to damage any of the grass or plantings you have around it, even with just a splash. So you either go with fresh water all the time or you don't have one. Well, I'd like to see us go with a fountain and, and, and something's going to recirculate it. If we're just going to run water down the drain, that's totally wrong. And that's the first I knew of this. Uh, a, a fountain would be recycled water, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Well. But uh, anyway, see how that goes. The only other thing I've got to say is I've heard a lot tonight, and I've seen mail-outs coming to my house from people running for office with numbers on it for what this pool and library are going to cost and the cost of upkeep, etc. They're nowhere close. It's time people got the right numbers. If you want to find out about it, talk to our staff. They'll be happy to get them for you. But to just pull figures out of the air, that seems to be what's happening because they're sure not the right numbers, I can tell you that right now. So please get your facts together, talk to staff, because they're way out of line. I've also seen signs out, maybe I've had more time to look this time because I'm not running, but signs against people running that are untrue. There are signs out there saying that two guys that work there in the state house voted against or voted for Obamacare. They're Republicans. They didn't vote for Obamacare. These are signs that people are putting out there to disgrace other people. And it goes the same. I mean, when you start throwing mud at the wall, it's going to come back and hit you in the face because it doesn't all stick. Let's try to work together. Let's try to get the right facts and figures. And I know our staff will do it for you. Let's help us all out. Let's do it right. I'd like to address some issues that are brought up in the call of the public tonight. On the, Tom brought up one. I'm on the cost of the, the swimming pool and the maintenance cost. We don't know what it is exactly. We've asked for those figures. Those figures can be presented to us before we vote on it. We'll take a look at it at the time we get the figures. But the seven and a half million and seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that a couple of people have put out on their campaign poster is not right. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm sorry. And if either one of them are elected to the council, I have to work with them for another two and a half years. But let's get our story straight on that. On the amount of usage at the pool, the usage could be up, no doubt about it. If Parents will let their kids go to the pool due to the condition of the pool. That pool has not been maintained properly. You cut your feet on the bottom of it when you're, when you're in there. Now, the other thing, let's take a look at Anthem. We know for a fact that Anthem 
doesn't have their pool open all the time. So this will give their children another opportunity to have a place to go swimming. I think that that's a great idea for the whole community. As far as that pool, is not just for the core people. It's for everybody in the town limits. And those who want to come in to use it from outside the town can also use it. Costs are going to be developed. Our recreation department will come up with charges that are reasonable for people to utilize that pool. Do we think it's going to make money? No. Is it going to get people into town? Yes. Comment was made, you're spending our money. That money is, yeah, it's the town's money, but we have been entrusted by the citizens of this community to spend it wisely and to get the best bang for the buck. We believe we're doing that on this facility that we're putting over here, a first-class facility that will draw additional people to Florence. The idea of impact fees being spent in certain areas because certain people put them in there, impact fees are for the community. They are st structured so that we spend them where we can for the betterment of Florence. What is the percentage of impact fees from, from uh, Sun City? I don't care. Sun City is part of Florence. We, the elected officials, have been appointed to spend these monies the best way we think we can. Community facility districts, for those of you who don't know, were set when we did Anthem. There's community facility districts out in Anthem to pay for the infrastructure. The infrastructure is being the roads, sidewalks, and things like that. Not the water and the sewer. There's street light districts also. But they are for one area of, area of town. They are not for the whole town. The whole town does not pay the CFD, just those people. And they are supposed to be notified upon the, on the purchase of a home that they are in the CFD or they're in any kind of a special de de development district. If they're not, then they need to go back to the people that sold the home and file a lawsuit against them, period, end of story. I have been told that the bonding that we're going out for well, some people may not believe it, and some people, uh, all I know is what, I can go by my staff reports, that this is, even if we go for bonding on this facility, it's not going to raise your taxes. The people that are going around saying it's going to raise your taxes don't know what in the he <clears throat> heck they're talking about. Come talk to our staff. Our staff will tell you. If you can believe our staff, because I've been told we can't believe our staff, that is wrong. You can believe our staff. If we catch them lying to you, they won't be our staff. None of them. None of them sitting down here would. If this council thought that our staff was lying to us. We are putting together a facility that this community can be proud of for years to come with that recreation department. It will develop the north area of town. It's going to bring, you, you were just watching, watch it. As my wife said, and I agree with her, Anthem is a part of Florence. Florence Gardens is a part of Florence. We are Florence. I knew this was coming up when, when I was the mayor before and Pulte came out there because of a different lifestyle. You folks chose to live in that. You folks knew what you were getting into if you bought it. But you are part of Florence. Whether you like it or not, I, I didn't want it to be Merrill Ranch. I wanted it to be Merrill Ranch at Florence or in Florence. Now that I got off my high horse, we have a very important election coming up in the February 20, what, 27th? What? What's the election day? August 26th. August 26th? August 26th? Day off. Home rule. Home rule is very, very important that citizens of Florence vote and pass. If not, we are going to be taken back by eight, nine years, budget-wise. You will see layoffs. You will see cutting services if we do it, if we don't pass home rule. 
It's very important to look on that long ballot you're going to be getting. Democrats get a short one this year. Uh, you Republicans got to, uh, you got to look down the ballot. Independents have to depend on which ballot they ask for to look. But we have to, we need to pass home rule. Staff cannot dictate one way or, or tell you yay or nay. It's against the law. The council can. Council members can speak up for it. But the, we have passed it every time it's come up, and we need to continue passing it in order for to better the lives of, of everybody here in Florence. With that, I need a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We're adjourned.